It can always get worse. I keep telling myself this, but it never seems to sink in. Every time I found a new bottom of the barrel, I think that there's no worse that people could do. And it's no different here. It can't get any worse. It, it just can't. But you probably don't know what I'm talking about. I mean, Nickelodeon has made plenty of stupid decisions that hacked off their viewership left and right. Maybe it was something that Spongebob did. Maybe it was that piece of shit last Airbender movie. Or maybe it was them giving Fred his own show. It's stupid fucking decision after stupid fucking decision. Do I think that this show is worse than Alan Gregory? Yes, without a doubt. And the general consensus seems to agree with me. Alan Gregory has an IMDB rating of 4.4. Breadwinners has a rating of 2.7. But that really doesn't explain this. On some level, I can understand where Alan Gregory came from. Trying to put a Stewie Griffin wannabe in the spotlight. Breadwinners' inception is... hard to interpret. It was based on a YouTube web cartoon. The Nick exec saw this and gave the creators 20 full episodes. Now this isn't the first time that they've looked to YouTube for new talent. Like I said, they gave Fred his own show. Here's the thing though. Back then, Fred was the number one channel on YouTube. You kind of figure that someone would pick him up for his own show eventually. This is the pilot video of Breadwinners. Notice something? Yeah, the fucking video doesn't even have 150,000 views. And I took the screenshot last week, so it probably still hasn't passed the mark. Let me put this in perspective. This is Dusk's Dawn. Remember that? Notice that it has 200,000 views. You know, I want to watch my Dusk's Dawn review because it's going to help us put quite a few things into context. Like the animation. The animation in Breadwinners is some of the worst that I've ever seen. The worst that I have ever seen. Dusk's Dawn was better because they didn't rely on stock images that took five seconds to find in Google Images. Control-Alt-Delete was better because I could recognize their humans as humans. These are supposed to be ducks. Really. This is another bird from another cartoon, Mordecai. Notice anything different? Yeah, their birds don't look remotely like birds. I mean, they could have beaks, maybe wings, maybe webbed feet. Or how about something other than minimalist geometric shapes? But besides that, let's look at the pilot and try to see exactly what Nickelodeon saw in this one four and a half minute episode that possessed them to give them a full season. Alright, Nick execs, someone emailed this to us saying that you're such talentless hacks, you'll probably make a shitty cartoon out of this, and that gave me the perfect idea. Let's make a cartoon out of this. Well, it's got some toilet humor here and there. That's given us tons of ratings in the past. But we've already got a whole show focused on that. Okay, well, it doesn't follow a plot, which is essential because, as we all know, kids are too stupid to follow a plot. But SpongeBob has been taking that place for years. Well, the jokes don't follow any coherence either. I mean, it requires even less intelligence. But we have fanboy and chum chum for that. Wait, do we have a show that does all of this gold at once? No, we don't. That settles it. Get them on the phone and give them all our money. But the animation is terrible. Seriously, Zeus? When the fuck has animation ever been important to cartoons? What, how do you think it went down? What I'm trying to say here is that anything that this short did that would make execs think that it would be a success was already done by the other two fucking shows that I've reviewed this month. Even following the worst possible logic, what value is there in the short that seems like it would be a good idea? But, with the terrible ratings and everyone I've talked to about it calling it just awful, it had to be on the fast track for failure, right? How? No. Someone tell me. Someone just fucking tell me. How the fuck is this possible? It's not possible. Are people really this fucking stupid? Or am I just going fucking crazy? Maybe I've died and have gone to hell, because this is just what I fucking expect. That's just a pathetic vile lie that's not even worth laughing at. Yeah, insulting their fucking intelligence. Pandering bullshit. Exposing them to infected splinters, driving their favorite characters to suicide, rehashing the most heinous stories ever told. Sanding down any quality that manages to slip through under their watch. Yeah, that's really putting kids first. No, at best, they only care about the bottom fucking line. And at worst, they are actually fucking malicious. They put kids first. You couldn't be any more insulting if you spit in my face after slaughtering my dog in front of it. Even a cursory look will review that bullshit lie for what it is. You are blind and stupid if you believe this. No. I'm gonna go on. When the dog shits on the carpet, you rub their noses on it and show them exactly what they did wrong. Sarah Bible, ain't that a fitting name? If any of this shit is putting kids first, I'd hate to think of how kids are under your care. Nickelodeon is one of the worst fucking companies in existence. Maybe that's because of Viacom, maybe it isn't. I don't fucking care. This always makes me feel like what I'm doing is completely in vain. Yeah, I know that I'm not gonna break through the thick skulls of people like Casey Alexander, but it's the kind of moment that makes me realize that I've been shouting at a hurricane this whole time. I can yell and scream as loud as possible, and it will make a fucking difference. Nick is gonna keep making these atrocities and keep making them worse. And considering that this is the shit that people apparently WANT to see, who am I to complain? You'd think something would change by now, but it, it's impossible. It, it's impossible to change anything.
No, I haven't forgotten. There was a time when Nick had viewership and it had respect. There's a reason that they've lost it. It's time to show you guys why. J just give me the latest episode of Breadwinners. Let's see what improvements they decide to place into this shit. Love Loaf? Whatever, let's just do this shit. Maybe for once, someone will hear. Or even better, maybe for once, they'll fucking listen! Now considering that they've got their own show, they've got an intro. We might as well take a look at it. Okay, I think we're done here. Let's take a look at the actual episode. Apparently, marriage is his fantasy, and he's been kissing a picture of... For today's episode of She Shark! Jenny Quackles? Wait a minute. That duck that they didn't know at all that they were delivering bread to back in the pilot. Yeah, uh... They're different fucking characters! They even have different appearances! Which is hard to believe since it would take some effort to find another stock photo of a duck. But really, you couldn't think of another name at all. I suppose that you're using your time for something better like... There's absolutely no fucking effort here. That synth in the background is playing- Yes, yes, please fucking kill him! Looks like it's upstream for you. Damn it. And yes, they are mining bread. Because that's what they fucking do now. They mine bread, and they deliver bread. Inside the thing that nearly Mercy killed this episode is a loaf of bread with a heart on it. Before they eat it, their genie guy tells them that it's a love loaf. Anyone who eats the love loaf will fall in love with the first person they see. This can only end so well. And apparently it caused a lot of trouble in the past. Hey, this is reminding me a lot of Hearts and Hooves Day. That, that's not a good thing. Also, the whole everything getting destroyed by a love drug was an unrealistic fantasy in that episode. Not something that actually fucking happened. No, the correct response is that you can't force anyone to love you, asshole. So they go to Jenny's house and meet her mother. She reveals that Jenny's at summer camp. Quick question, what age are these guys? I mean, Badoos and Sway Sway actually have jobs and live on their own, but adults don't go to summer camp, and spoilers, Jenny and a camp counselor. And oh fuck. This just got a shit ton creepier. So they get knocked down the stairs, and Sway Sway accidentally ends up eating some of the bread, and did I say shit ton creepier? I meant 20 shit tons creepier. And yes, this is a romantic love, if you're asking. Hey, you still got that music that sounds more at home in a shitty porno than in a kid's cartoon. Anyway, they drive to summer camp, but boys aren't allowed inside. They make a joke about Sway Sway being in love, and then they forget about that subplot for a while. Then, this... this hurts. The Picker of Noses! Anyone else feeling just the slightest bit nauseous right now? Um, this could get extremely awkward extremely quickly. Anyway, before Beduce, and yes, these names fucking hurt to say, can give the girl he's stalking the love drug, the camp counselors interrupt them, and almost see through their disguises. Um, 911, I'd like to report a sexual assault in progress. Look at his fucking eyes! That's the look of mindless lust with no adherence to ethics or the other person involved. Who the fuck came up with that? Or... Better yet, who the fuck didn't see that this would be a problem? And then we get another musical number. Is it just as bad as the last one? Yes I can! I can stop the music right now! Because I'm evil! And so bad! Somewhere in the ballpark. Anyway, the song gets both of them discovered, somehow, and that gets them kicked out of camp. Yeah, uh, police? He's been banned from the premises, but he's still persistent in having his way with her. You've gotta get down here right now. And they enter the wrong cabin. And then we get a reprise of the first fucking song. Said the guy she had never even seen before. Spoilers, they wake up the camp counselors instead. They confiscate the love bread, and they channel the canker sisters. Except worse. Why is this still hard to watch despite them fucking deserving it? Oh, replacing words and syllables with your animal species name. I haven't heard that one before. And then they fly off. Number one show, guys. Number one show for kids 2 to 11. I would say that this was like Transformers, but that actually had good animation and better writing. I mean, everyone involved knew that Alan Gregory was a terrible mistake that should have never happened. But imagine a network giving them 20 episodes based on their pilot. Now imagine that going on to be successful! Maybe it wasn't successful because adults can realize what's in front of them is crap. It took me the splinter to wake up and figure out that there were terrible episodes out there. No, I know how this shit happened. Adults don't care what their kids watch, as long as they don't showcase a disabled or gay person.